time, it dawned on me. I said, if I think I'm depressed, if I think I'm broken, if I think I'm at my rock bottom, if I think I'm alone, I am. But it works both ways. If I think I'm okay, if I think, yes, I'm at rock bottom, but I can only go up from there. If I think I'm taking strides in the right direction, if I think I have absolutely everything that I need, if I think I'm gonna be okay, then I am. And so I started the process to kind of transform my life. And one of the most important things that helped me was cleaning out my input. Social media, who I was following, what I was looking at, what pictures were coming through my newsfeed, who I was talking to, who was around me, who was I connected to. Are you clear about what's coming in? Because what's coming in is going to influence what's coming out and what stays in your head. So when I started to clean up my social media and not only removing people who were negative and removing people who were doing absolutely nothing but staying stagnant in life, but I started to include people who were doing the things that I wanted to do. I started to include people who were motivating and inspiring and uplifting. And I got serious and committed about getting through this because I was determined to be a survivor and I was determined that suffering through a miscarriage would not trigger my suicidal thoughts. I would not go there again. And what it taught me was a, a sense of resilience and an unwavering strength that I didn't even know was there. But as someone who's always wanted children to go through something like that on her first pregnancy, what it told me was, if I can get through that, I can get through anything. That there's nothing in this world that can stop me from achieving anything at this point. I came through that situation feeling absolutely unstoppable. And I know that's not everyone's story in this room as far as the specifics, but broaden it a little bit. Because we've all been through something we didn't think we could get through. Take that survival story and allow it to motivate you to get through the little things. The little things kind of don't matter anymore. They, they're not, they're speed bumps at best. Maybe even a stop sign. But it's not a roadblock. You have to push through that. So funny story, um, my favorite motivational speaker that I aspire, well, that I watch and get inspiration for myself is Lisa Nichols. And she said, when people were calling her the next Oprah, she said, if, I, if you ask me to be Oprah, I'm going to fail you. But I do a damn good Lisa. So I do a damn good Tierra. <laughs> um, my closing remarks is, A, it really starts with loving yourself and the whole self. That means flaws and all. Um, and then chase your dreams fiercely after you've gotten through the self-love part. Um, a lot of times people are quick to say, I don't have time. I call BS, honestly, because you can make time for what's important to you. Um, how long did it take you to wake up this morning? How late did you, how early did you go to bed? Or how late did you stay up? Um, one thing that I have done for myself is I've challenged myself to earn my sleep every day. So every single day, I am doing something that is benefiting my future, my goals, and my dreams 100% without fail every single day. Even if, it, if I'm exhausted, I will not go to sleep unless I touch my dream at some point that day. Um, so if there's something that you want to do, you really have to reevaluate what are you willing to sacrifice. I work anywhere between 50 to 70 hours a week. I have an hour commute each way. I am actively involved in my sorority. I coach cheerleading, and I'm actively involved in my church. And I still find time for my business, for my books, and for my dreams, and for my family and friends. It's about what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to make possible? And plenty of people have said, well, something's got to give. And I'm like, well, no. It's all non-negotiable for me, so I make it work 100%.
a hundred percent of the time. And I will close by sharing a quote from T.D. Jakes, and he was asked a similar question: How do you do everything that you do, and you know, still be successful? And what he said was. Every day, I know that there's going to be someone disappointed, and I know I'm going to drop the ball on something. It's my job to make sure I don't disappoint the same person twice. So when she said that, she's active in her sorority. She moved here from somewhere else. She didn't know us, didn't know any of us. Joined our chapter, and when I said, let's do this event, she said, I will lead it. So I want to give you a round of applause and the whole community. You are amazing. So yes, and she wasn't even going to do it for her own book. I insisted. She was doing it, and it was not for herself. She was going to do it for the rest of them. And I said, oh, no. How could you do this event and not even include yourself? So I just want to say that's awesome and amazing. And then I want to turn it over to Tamara Stallings, and I just want to say, for her, there are a lot of people online that say they are life coaches. And so I had to, you know, find out from her, what's the difference? How, how is everyone saying they're a life coach? Because it seems to be the most popular thing to do. And so when you see her credentials and what she's done, and she's actually in HR, so she's got a different angle. And what I find is that everyone has a different angle, even up here, everyone has a different angle. They're not taking an HR perspective. You're more of a, a mental health, own your purpose, live your life. You're talking about from a natural perspective. You're the only person that I know that's really taking it from an HR perspective that's based on credentials. So when you find someone that says they're gonna be a life coach, Ask them what part of it, because there's three different parts we see right here of this umbrella called Life Coach. But Tamara, you taught me a lot about when you're online and everyone says they're doing it, what we should be looking for. Thank you, and I hate the word coach. Um, probably, what the word you use? Um, strategist. strategist. It depends, I mean, it depends on my environment. Strategist. <laughs> to millennials, I'm a career stylist, to um, if I'm in a corporate situation, it's it's very different. I'm an organizational behavior consultant. Um, but I have the credentials so I can say that. These people are here lying. But anyway, that's not the story. So, okay, so my, um, my uh, top two tips for, uh, in my parting words, my top two tips for living a go be great life are as follows. One, decide that you are worth it. Decide that you're worth it. Um, and by deciding, it requires action. So you decide and you do something about it. Right? And number two, this stuff is not easy. Please do not get it twisted. I'm not up here claiming, look, I went to college, I, went, I, grew, I started Howard at 30 years old. So this stuff is not easy. But it is possible. So don't be afraid of the thorns. They will turn into rosebuds at some point. Just stay the course. Okay, let me say something about Dr. Reed here. So Dr. Reed, and actually all three of these ladies were invited to be authors at our most recent Midler conference. And so what I appreciate in particular about Dr. Reed is that she's willing to share her wisdom and her pain. And I don't know if any of you knew her, you saw it play out on Facebook, we went to the hospital to see her, and she was upbeat about it, but we shared, we grieved with her. We did. I mean, it tore my soul out to see her in that kind of pain, and to see that she's in a better place today than where she was. I'm telling you what, I went to the memorial celebration where we released the balloons in the air for Melody. And we all live through that with you. So thank you for sharing your pain with us. We know that it was very, very difficult, but I think we've grown, and now we have lessons learned on things that we would not do if we you know, could look at the still voices talking to us. So please give us some closing remarks. My biggest closing remark is to listen to the still small voice, but not just from your own health perspective, but from every aspect of your life. 
when I, I told you that I was uh, raised, well, born with teenage parents, and so there was an expectation that I wasn't going to be worth much. And so most of my life I had to fight that in my spirit, but also I had something to prove. And when you have something to prove, you don't always follow your spirit. When I decided to become a naturopath, I was thought to be crazy. What is that? Why can't you be a pediatrician or, or, or a primary care doctor? Because that's not what God told me to do. I had to follow what God said for me to do. And so because of that, I became a naturopath and I did it fearlessly and, and unapologetically. But what that also says is I have to be the best naturopath. So when you find something that your spirit is calling you to do, not only are you called to do it, but you're called to be the best at it. Now, you've heard a lot of new age ideas of what you think naturopathy is. It is not somebody giving you herbs. And if you see somebody just trying to give you herbs and vitamins, run. Because that is not doctor of naturopathy. So I am a certified doctor of naturopathy. But I use the term coach because whoever gets well at Dr. So-and-so's office, nobody. But if you have somebody to coach you through a process that you have no understanding of, then you will get results because you have to own it and engage in the process with somebody who's willing to walk with you. And because I've walked those walk, excuse me, those walks, and I've traveled through those dark places, I can help pull you out. But to follow your passion, you will have to go into some dark places. And if it's really your passion, God will take you to the other side. And there is light on the other side. So when you are called to do something, don't shy away from it. Because it will eat you and eat you and eat you until you do it. And once you do it, if you take a few steps after a while, you, those aren't your steps in the foot in the sand. Not anymore. You have a divine presence that's always with you. And it will guide you into the storm and into the meadow and out into the sun.